Luke, in a minute. Uh, I need a favor. Of course. What's up? Well, the contract for the union employees of the hospital is up for renewal soon. Yeah, we discussed that at the last board meeting. Yeah, well, the heads of the, uh, the locals are meeting today at Al's Diner, and they asked me to stop by. In a formal capacity? No, no, uh, strictly informal. Just kind of establish a uh, goodwill. I'd like you to join me. Oh, yeah, of course. I just didn't know that board members usually went to that type of function. Well, I'm not inviting you as a board member. I want you to uh, babysit Dr. Oliver. Apparently, you didn't hear my question. I heard you. I'm not answering because it's not your damn business. Chris, you drew your own blood. Now you're having it tested for a parasite that's associated with viral myocarditis? Why? I haven't been feeling very well, so... Shortness of breath, fatigue, rapid heartbeat. Probably just the flu. Any chest pains? Look, I'm prone to acid reflux. I thought, hey, what the heck, I'll just test for everything else. So if you don't mind, I'm gonna... You know, this isn't a joke. If you've contracted a viral infection that's affected your heart, you need to have a chest x-ray and an EKG. Look, last I heard, you're a neurologist, not a cardiologist. Excuse me. The, stop, just listen to me, will you? Back off, okay? I can handle it. Hey, I, I know you told me to go home. Hey, Reed. What is going on here? Everything okay? No, everything's not okay. Chris has a patient who could be very ill. He brought me in to consult on the case. I was just telling Reed, now that I got his opinion, um, I can handle it from here. So I think you may still need my help on this one, Chris. You think so? See, the patient's family is dragging their feet about performing any more diagnostic tests. They are in denial about the severity of his condition. He may have contracted a heart disease that could be fatal. Oh, that's awful. You know, this is privileged. Maybe we shouldn't be talking about it in front of Katie. No, there is an exception to privilege if the physician thinks that the patient's life is in danger. Yeah, well, this case is not at that point. I hope so. If you need me, you know where to find me. That seemed very intense. Do you want me to leave? You came back. Very glad. Reed. What's the man I was looking for? I hear you're going to that union thing later today. I suppose so. Waste of time if you ask me. Reed, if Bob wants you to go, you should go. Reed. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm just I'm thinking about this case. So I was walking Margot to her car, and I realized that I probably shouldn't leave you here. And you probably shouldn't drive yourself home, because what if you passed out behind the wheel? That was a one-time thing. You hope. So I think the best thing to do is bring you home with me. And we can play doctor. And I would give you a very thorough examination. I bet you would. And I would love to. But I can't. Um, I should probably look in on that patient I was discussing with Reed. Um, but can I get a rain check? Sure. You're really worried about that patient, are you? Well, it's just that if it's what I think it is, I'm going to have to do some quick follow-ups. And um, speaking of which, would you just excuse me one second? Sure. I just gotta... Hi, uh, it's uh, Dr. Chris Hughes. Uh, look, I just sent some blood work down for a CPK count. Yeah, I just want to make sure that there's a, a rush on it. It's important. Well, I hope you feel better. Call me later, okay? Well, well, of course I will. Thank you for understanding, okay? Mm -hmm. well. Hi. Oh, Chris, perfect timing. Listen, a group of the union reps are going to be at Al's Diner later. And uh, it's informal, but I'd like you to be there. Um, later? Like, today? Is that a problem? No, it's, it's just the first that I've heard of it, so... Yeah, well, last minute, it's going to be status quo if you become chief of staff. Right. Reed's going to be there, and whoever inherits my position is going to be actively involved in the negotiations, and it's a chance to... Uh, meet with some of the top players from labor. All right, well, count me in. 
Sounds like a great opportunity to show which man will be best for the job. Then I'll see both of you there later. And Luke, I'll see you there in the uh, capacity that we discussed. Absolutely. Well, that was interesting. What? Just took a dig at you and you didn't jab back at him. Are you, are you sure you're all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Oh, oh, I get it. Sort of a new tactic psychology type of thing. No, I was trying to be professional. I would think that you of all people would understand that, Luke. Okay. Sorry. Well, listen, Bob's assistant got some information prepped for you and Chris um, about the hospital's situation with labor. I was thinking that maybe together the two of us could go over it. I could quiz you. It sounds like a plan. What were the cost of living increases in the last contract with the nurses? Um, first and second year, 3.4%. Third year, 3.5%. Yes! Okay, let's talk strategy. What is going to be the biggest item on the table this year? What? <laughs> when did you become Norma Ray? I know a little bit about this stuff from the mm. union negotiations, following that at WOAK, and I was a nurse's aide, remember? <laughs> That you give one heck of a sponge bath. I'm just a very good negotiator. Are you now? Mm -hmm. mm. Tag sales, garage sales, you know, very high pressure situations. Not everyone can hack it. Do you haggle? Absolutely. I bet we'd have a lot of fun shopping at garage sales. I bet we'd have a lot of fun doing a lot of things. Yes, we would. We will. What are you thinking about? It's just been a long time since I've looked forward to things. Hoped, you know. It's all because of you. Oh, shucks. No, I mean it. You make me very happy. You make me happy, too. Yes, yeah. back to work. Um, let's see. The head of the janitor's union. Um, Armando Pastrana. Nice. Orderlies? Oh, it's a woman. It's a woman. Louise something. Her brother. Excuse me. I gotta take this, okay? Yeah. Oh, Christine's. facts and figures down pat i have a photographic memory hmm. must have come in handy in med school mm -hmm. well that brings me to wardrobe what are you gonna wear clothes <laughs> again it is painfully obvious that you need me in your life don't wear your lab coat okay why not it says doctor i am a doctor i know but Nobody there is going to be in their uniforms. They're going to make an effort to look halfway decent, and you need to do the same. But don't wear a suit and tie either, because that's just way overkill, and it screams arrogance. Why do I feel like I'm on one of those makeover shows? You know, you should wear chinos, a polo, and a jacket. Uh, that says professional, yet casual. I'm a regular guy, and I'm comfortable with myself. I am comfortable with myself. Yes, but don't be overly pleased with yourself like a stuck-up brain surgeon. I am a stuck-up brain surgeon. Read... The point is, you're going to be meeting with people who are very proud of their work. They're very hardworking. You can't come off as superior to them. Which brings me to interpersonal relationships. Ah, the dreaded talking to people skills that I lack. <laughs> and body language. So just smile a lot. Genuinely. And break the ice by talking about uh, baseball or, or the weather, something that everybody can relate to. As opposed to what? As opposed to your own brilliance. In other words, don't be myself. Be approachable. 
be nice. Okay, so are we done? Because I really need to rush home and find the perfect Chino's polo jacket combination so I can look as unlike myself as possible. I hurt your feelings. And I'm sorry, but you wanted me to coach you on this type of thing. Yeah, I did. I mean, I, I do. It's not you. I'm worried about this patient, and I'll see you at Al's. I'm going to be the surgeon dressed like Fred Rogers. 